But it's amazing what will happen when you're obedient to yeah. God. And you realize and see things the way God sees things. The basin. Are you washing people's feet? Or are you washing your hands? Yeah. Like Pilate did. What will we do with Jesus? John 14, 15 says, If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved to my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Turn to John 14, if you would, with me. Turn to John chapter 14. Look at verse number 23. John 14, verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And the Father will love him, and we will come unto him, make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men, but we got to follow. Right. There in John chapter 13, we see there in John chapter 13 of this basin that Jesus used to wash the feet. Do you really love our Savior? He said, I'm doing this as an example that you need to wash one another's feet. You need to be a servant to someone else. See, with that pilot there in Matthew, when he was washing his hands, Pilate knew what was right. Yeah, that's right. We know what's right. Amen. We've been under the preaching of the Word of God. We've heard the, guy, uh, the preacher preach, and we've read the Word of God, and we know what's right. Uh -huh. The problem is we walk in independence. What do you mean by that? We know the truth, but we choose to walk independent of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're not ignorant of it. Ignorant means you don't know it. No, you know if you've been in this church a while, you know. If you've been in the preaching of the Word of God, you know. Amen. We're just talking facts here. Come on. I'm throwing fastballs to you. I'm not throwing you any curveballs. I couldn't hit a curveball. I thought I had I was only fastball. Okay? Matter, matter of fact, he was even warned by his wife. Yeah, that's right. All right? He knew that Jesus was innocent. Yeah. Amen. He knew it. And yet he... Washed his hands of the responsibility that he had. Yeah. You know what? There's many of us. We know who Jesus is. We know who his church is. We know how to be saved. We know how to witness. We know we should witness. Yeah. We just wash away the responsibility. Let somebody else do it. Pilate cried out and said, I don't find any fault in him. He knew what was good. He knew what was right. But he washed his hands of the responsibility to do anything with the truth that he knew. He didn't know all of the Old Testament. He didn't know it all. But what he knew, I find no fault in him. I know he's a good man. I know he's not worthy of death. And he wasn't. Yeah, and isn't right. that true? Right. And he washed his hands. Church, we got a responsibility. Yeah. 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 We got a responsibility to speak up, to tell others, to go into the world, to support missions, to pray. See, in living the Christian life today, there needs to be both preaching and practice. Amen. You know, Brother Dennis and I were talking about, it's funny how when we get older, we talk about our meds. Mm -hmm. Talk about our doctor's meds. You know, what, hey, what do you want? What do you take? What, do you, what is this? What is this? You know, I found out that the doctors are just practicing. Yeah. I just wish they'd get it right. Yeah. Someone asked me a long time ago, you know, does practice make perfect? No, but perfect practice makes perfect. Yeah. See, if you practice the wrong way, you'll play the wrong way. Yeah. 
The greatest compliment I ever got from a coach was from my college coach when somebody interviewed him when we were down playing the University of Houston years ago when we won the Southwest Conference for the first time in like 25 years. And they were interviewing Coach Chandler about me. They said, well, what do you think of Bobby Bonner? He said, I would pay to watch Bobby practice. He said, nobody practices harder than he does. Because I know I can't run as fast. I know I can't hit home runs like everybody else. But I can hustle. I can run as hard as I can to first base. I can take a guy out of second base. I can go for the double. I can go for the triple. I can die for a ball. And by the way, you have to practice that. Because if you try to do something in the game that you're not used to, it won't come natural. But if you start doing something and doing something, and do it pretty soon, it's going to come natural. It's just going to come out of you. You know why we don't witness? We're not practicing. You know why we're not praying? We're not practicing. We've got to have some perfect practice. See, there needs to be both instruction and involvement. There needs to be explanation, but there needs to be exercise. The whole, the whole process of the church is to produce servants of Jesus Christ. Amen. What would thou have me to do? What do you want me? Yeah. Here I am. Yeah. George Grace, I just left professional baseball. What do you want me to do? He says, here's a bulletin. There's a list of needs. Try to go fill one. I said, well, what's the greatest need? He said, bus ministry. I said, I'm not a mechanic. I didn't know what bus ministry was. <laughs> I said, I don't know anything about diesel engines, but I'll try. He laughed. He said, I don't need you as a mechanic. I go, well, what is a bus manager? He said, well, I want you to be a bus captain. I want you to go down and pick up inner city kids and bring them back to the church and love them and tell them about Jesus. Yeah. I thought I could do that. Yeah. So, man, my inner city bus route was J Street, downtown Rochester. I picked up the crackhead kid, the prostitute's kid, and brought them out to the suburbs and told them about Jesus Christ. Amen. Go visit on Saturday, knock on the door, walk in, parents pass out, they're hungover. But you're there watch love on the kids yeah, yeah, yeah. and bring them to Jesus Christ. One of the earliest young boys, his name was Charlie Angler. Remember little Charlie who rode my bus? And as far as I know, he's still driving the bus at the First Bible Baptist Church. He's still going to pick up kids. He's one of my first bus kids. See, the whole, again, function, process of the church is to produce a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? We need to get off the bench and get into the battle. Amen. We have a couch potato mentality. I believe true Christianity is one generation from extinction. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. We don't know. No one knows how to serve God anymore. Just show up, vacuum, hey, clean the church, do something for Jesus. Right. Amen. Just do it for Him. Have your mind on Him in whatever you're doing. Yeah. And do it. For the glory of God. God has redeemed us for a purpose, and that purpose is service. Ephesians 2, verse 10. Again, he's called us what to be that servant. It seems sometimes when a preacher like myself or your preacher, and, and he gives you a challenge to serve, it's almost like, wait a minute. You're invading my happiness. God hasn't called you to happiness. Amen. God's called you to service. Amen. To be joyful. Because I'm doing it for him. Right. To God be the glory. That's why no matter what type of day I can have, whether it's ugly or it's beautiful, yeah. I'm going to do it anyway. Amen. Whether i got to wash feet, but I sure don't want to wash my hands of the responsibility yeah. that God has given you and given me. And that's what? To bring him glory in my life. Something must be wrong in us if there is no desire to be in the game. Yeah. Right. You know, I was a coach for four years in high school. I didn't realize that kids were growing up 
in New York and never knowing what baseball was. I started a baseball team in our Christian school, had 11 kids come out for the team. Only two could play catch without getting hurt. Yeah. On a varsity level. So one was my catcher and one was my pitcher. Then we just went from there. So then only two people could catch. So our first baseman couldn't even catch. And you know the infield could catch. So it was like, you know, I mean, we got 10 run rules every day. The coaches love beating bother team, beating bother team, you know. And those kids, bless their heart, they couldn't play. But there was one kid, man, he just came out to be on Bonner's team. And, you know, there, and I only had a couple rules. And my rules was don't make Jesus look bad. Amen. Amen. And you know how you do that? The Bible says do all things to the glory. Yeah. Whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Yeah. Yeah. I said you're playing this game as far as I'm concerned for the glory of God. So you're going to run hard on and off the field. You're going to run hard to first base. I don't care if he throws you out by 45 feet. You're going to run hard. You're not going to peel off. You're going to hustle. You're going to run. At least we're going to be in the game. And there was one kid I'll never forget. One kid didn't hustle, man. I, you know, you can't get mad because you're a Christian. But, boy, you can, you know, you can bite your tongue a couple times. Hey, man, you want to say something because his mama's right there, you know. You, well, this kid was sitting there, and he takes out his peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the bench. <laughs> now, he's my only son, and I want to get him in the game. I look at him, and I, I watch him. He just, he did it. He, I don't even think he knew we were playing. Yeah. He's, man, he sets it aside. He cuts it up. And, and then he goes, oh, you want to play coach? <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. you know, I just went on. You know, I had to deal with what I had to deal with. But he didn't want in the game. Yeah. What happens is when we sit, we end up souring. Yeah, that's right. We end up just soaking it all in. And we just wash our hands. Yeah. Pastor's responsibility. His are fine if I was paying the big bucks. 